Hi there, thank you so much for being here. Today I'm gonna to be sharing my budget update for this year. I set out to give myself a budget for the year of 2023. I tend to overspend, I buy way too many clothes, shoes, accessories, makeup. I love shopping, I love clothes, I love adding new things to my closet and my makeup drawer and it's really become a problem. So this year in 2023, I wanted to hone in on that, set a goal and it is a long long overdue budget update today for the months of June, July, and August. I thought it would be best to just cram it all into one video. I hope it's juicy. I hope you like it. My voice is still a little raspy sounding. I have been sick and I just have not yet 100% gotten back to normal with the sound of my voice, so it is a little scratchy. I apologize. But for those of you who haven't been to my channel before, my name is Jessica. I love style. I love fashion. I enjoy purchasing clothing, playing around in my closet, creating different outfit ideas, and I really really am trying to get a grip on my spending. So that is why I set out to do the budget year this year. Hope that you enjoy seeing the items that I've added throughout the last few months. And let's go ahead and get started on the update. If you've been to my channel before, you may have heard me announce in a previous video, I was challenged by one of my subscribers. I just love you all dearly. I get so many of you that will comment and make the comment section so much fun on the channel here. So I appreciate you so much. But I had a subscriber challenge me to a no buy June and I accepted the challenge. I thought that I would be able to do this with no problem at all. I thought I would not bat an eye at being able to go 30 days without purchasing anything for my budget. Spoiler alert, I did end up purchasing something. It was going extremely well until June 17th. I took my kids out of town and we went to get a few things for them for school. We were in Ross Dress for Less and I purchased these black pants with white stitching. They're high-waisted. I love the way that they fit on me. They're very flattering. They were $17.99. And I also picked up this red cropped graphic tank. I have a lot of tank tops. Did I need this tank? No, I did not need it, but I do not have very many graphic tank tops. Most of the tank tops in my closet are plain. You would think that would be a good thing because they mix and match and go with lots of different things, but I was just jonesing for something that had a little bit of a graphic print on it. I loved the edgy graphic on this red tank. It was $5.99. So I purchased both of these items in the same shopping trip. That was all I bought in the month of June. So I totaled out at $23.99. 98 cents. So for me, I feel like June was a success. I set out not to buy anything. I had a hundred dollar budget, but I opted to challenge myself to see if I could go the entire month without purchasing anything. And I did add those two items, which I am very happy about. I have no regrets. For my budget update, I also have two other items, two other spreadsheets that I'm tracking things on. I want to also add when I want to buy something, but I choose not to. So I have a list of items that I wanted, but I didn't purchase. And then I also have my wish list, which that has been the most eye-opening part of this entire journey so far this year is I tend to add things to my wish list and not buy them. And then I tend to see things when I'm out and about that I really, really love, but they're not on the wish list and I end up purchasing them anyway. I don't really have any regrets about it. I do know there are several people that use a wish list, tried and true. They do not buy anything unless it's on there, but I do tend to be a bargain shopper and occasionally there will be that piece Peace that I know it's not on my wish list, but I know I will love it and I will be able to style it so many different ways and it's such a great deal. I know there may be a lot of you that really go against that, but that just tends to be a habit of mine. I am working on it. It's something that's definitely come to the forefront throughout this budget year. For items that I wanted and didn't purchase on June 7th, I added an Ozma wrap top. This website has the most beautiful natural fiber wrap tops. They are so gorgeous. I think they're so pretty. And that top is $178. 
So I wanted it so bad. I wanted it in the creamy natural color and I also wanted it in the darker mocha brown color. I thought these were so pretty, but even with some of the discount codes I found, I just could not find myself to spend that much money on a top, even though I know it's amazing quality. I'll probably have it forever. It's just something that it's a mind block that I haven't been able to overcome yet with spending that much money on one item. So I'm evolving, I'm growing, I'm learning. I may get to the point where that might change. But for now, I did add that on that I, I wanted it, but I didn't purchase it. And I also added a hot pink eyelet see-through button up top that was at JCPenney. I saw this online, it was so gorgeous. In fact, I have to tell you, I went back to buy it because I loved it so much and it was sold out. So I just chalk those times up to, it wasn't meant to be, it wasn't meant to be in my closet. I usually get over those things fairly quickly, but it was $70 and I added that on June 13th. For the June wish list, oh my goodness, I kind of went ham here. There were quite a few items that I added onto my June wish list. I added high-waisted full coverage underwear from Skims on June 1st. Also on June 1st, I added some neon swirl pumps that I saw on Sheen's website that I absolutely loved. I have been searching for a pair of neon pumps and I finally decided to add them to my wish list on June 1st. I added the Ozma Dance Wrap Top onto my wish list, both colors, the natural and the tea color. So both of those items went on the wish list. And I also added a black and white handbag. I've been looking for a black and white striped bold statement handbag. I don't have anything like that in my collection. I really do think black and white is just a classic color combination. And I would like to add something out of those colors at some point. So I've been looking at something like that. I also added the House Labs foundation. I've been looking at reviews and this foundation just looks glorious to me. I want to try it so bad. I looked at it in Sephora and so I have added that to my wish list. I also added a straw hat with a wide brim. I don't have a really light, breathable, airy straw hat with a solid brim. I have a couple of floppy hats that I own in my collection, but nothing with a solid, straight, hard brim. So I have added that to my wish list as well. There was a Sherling Moto jacket. Um, or a vest that I would like to add something. They're so trendy right now, but I'm really trying to hold out to see if that's really something I want. I already have a Sherling vest in my closet, but it's not the same as the ones that are popping up all over right now. So I have added that. I might add that. It's probably going to be one of those items that ends up getting scratched off and in three weeks to a month I forget about it and I never end up doing anything with it. And I also added a cropped blazer, preferably in a neutral color. I added the vest and the blazer on June 30th. So those were all of my wish list items that I added in June. I have been wishing for a lot of things in the month of June with cutting back my purchases and I'm interesting to know if there is any correlation between the two because I had to tell myself no so many times and that I knew I wasn't buying anything that did tend to be a month where my wish list was at its largest. Headed into the July budget update. July and August were definitely months of shoes. I added more shoes in July and August than I believe I have all year. So I'm excited to show these to you. On July 10th, I purchased some rhinestone turquoise mule heels from H&M. They were $20.99. They were on sale. Most of the items that I purchased are on sale. This particular item was regularly $39.99. The next pair of shoes that I purchased were the neon swirl pumps that I put on my wish list in June. They are from Sheen. I paid $7.32 for these with my discounts. They were originally $23.60. So these were a steal. I've worn them. They're super comfortable. I wore them all day without any trouble. Great heel height. Really love these heels and they can go with so many different things. The next purchase that I made was on July 23rd 
and it was also from Sheen. I ordered the brown long sleeve faux wrap top. This would be considered a dupe for the Osma top that I was talking about, except for a couple of huge details. The first detail, obviously, this top is made from polyester and other fabrics. It is not a natural fiber top, and it is also not a true wrap top. It's completely sewn together, and then it just has the faux wrap to make it look like it's a complete wrap top. But I do love it. I love the fit of it. I did style this and took it to Las Vegas, but I did not get any photos of me wearing it. So I do like this top. It was originally $10.49. I got it for $7.00. And 82 cents. The next item I purchased are my two pair of shoes. I got these on July 19th from Maurice's. I picked up these pink strappy heels. They were $19.78, originally $44.90. And the last item from Maurice's is another pair of green block heels. I'd been looking for a pair of green heels and I thought these fit the bill. I love the thick, chunky heel. They're really comfortable, easy to walk in. I can wear them to the office all day. They were $20.68, regularly $39.90. So with the last item, I also added on July 21st, the camel colored cropped blazer from Forever 21. That was also on my wish list. So I know the items weren't on my wish list for a really long time, but I was super pleased with knowing that I had something on the wish list. I had my eye on it. I wanted it badly enough that I put it on my wish list. And then I did follow through the following month and purchase those items. So my total for July with all of those items was $95.55. If I had not purchased the items on sale and gotten the discounts that I did, I would have spent $182.88. So July was a success, great month. I added some great summer staples and I enjoy everything that I added. I have no regrets. I've worn everything, styled everything. And so far it's working great. Shoes are comfortable clothes have washed well and so July was definitely a win. July items that I added to my wish list is a light blue long teddy styled duster coat. I saw this coat when I was on the website for Forever 21 and I purchased my cropped blazer. I really love this coat. I love the dusty blue color. I added this to my wish list on July 21st, the same day that I purchased the cropped blazer from Forever 21. Now, as far as items that I wanted but didn't purchase in July, I do just have two items. I added a Kelly Green Moto jacket. I saw this on Sheen's website. I love Kelly Green. If you've been to my channel before, you know I absolutely adore this color. I have several Kelly Green pieces already, which is probably why I don't need this piece. I have plenty of other items in my wardrobe that I can reach for instead. I also added a lime green cropped vest that was on the Sheen website. I do believe I have a photo of this as well. I like the neon cropped blazer, but for longevity, for withstanding the test of time and not dating super quickly, I opted for the camel color instead. Rolling into the month of August, this is where I did go outside of my boundaries a little bit. And in the month of August, I purchased on August 1st, a pair of tailored pleated wide leg trousers from Madewell. I wanted to try a little experiment. I normally do not shop on sites that have this type of price points for clothing. I usually jump on there and I oogle and I wish and long for things, but I never really make it come to fruition. I never click the purchase button. I never follow through with it because I'm so afraid of spending that much money on one item. But I just really wanted to test it out. I wanted to test the waters, see how it would go, try out the quality, see how I felt about it. And I absolutely love these gray wide leg trousers. They have been so much fun to style. They were originally $59.99 and I purchased them for $41.99 
99 cents made well was having a sale and I was so curious. The curiosity just got the best of me. So I did not add too many items in the month of August uh, compared to the prior month of July. I did add quite a few items in July. On August 13th, I added this lilac faux suede button down dress. I cannot even tell you when I was shopping with my kids. Again, I was on an outing with my kids and I was out of town to see my daughter and we were in Ross Dress for Less and I looked on the rack and I don't know if you ever have those moments where it was almost like this garment had a halo and a ray of light shining down on it. It was just calling my name with like neon flashing lights. Pick me, pick me. So I walked over and I saw this dress. I picked it up and I had to take a triple take. I couldn't believe the heft and the weight of the quality of the material. It, I do believe it is 100% suede. It is a Ralph Lauren dress. The original ticket price on this item was $795. I'll put an insert up so you can see. I took a picture of it. I had to triple take when I looked at the MSRP price on this dress, $795. This dress is absolutely gorgeous. And I picked it up on clearance at Ross for $39.99. This was the mother load of my budget year. If I have purchased anything that the quality and the craftsmanship, the color, the, it just screams Jessica to me. This this is the most gorgeous dress. Purple, lilac, lavender, those are all my favorite colors. I love any shade of purple. So when I saw this dress and I saw the price on it, I had to purchase this. So the last item that I did pick up in August was the flare denim jumpsuit from Mar Reese's. I bought this on August 25th, it was originally $59.90. I did get it on a sale for $34.30. And it has the flare leg. I don't typically love a flare leg, but I love everything about the way this jumpsuit fits. I fully anticipated ordering this jumpsuit. I wasn't sure about the sizing and I thought it would come and I would try it on. It wouldn't fit right. I wouldn't like the way that it fit on my body and I fully planned on returning it. But I put this jumpsuit on. It has just the right amount of stretch. It just flatters my body in all the right places. I feel so great when I wear it. And so for August, my total, I did go over a little bit, spoiler alert, um, my total for August was $116.28 with the Ralph Lauren dress and all of those items together. Had I not gotten them on sale, I would have spent $914.89. Whoop, whoop. I'm super excited about that. That is just such a find. I still can't get over it. I cannot wait to continue to wear this dress throughout the fall. And I can also wear it as a duster. I feel like it has some versatility there. I can wear it a couple of different ways. I'm over the moon excited to wear this dress. I cannot believe that a garment of this quality and this price point was hanging in Ross. It just totally blew my socks off. Moving on in August for my wish list and also items that I want wanted but didn't purchase. I am celebrating this month that there was zero entries on both spreadsheets. I did not want anything that I didn't end up purchasing in the month of August and I also did not add anything to my wish list. So I feel like that's the budget update folks. I do want to continue to lessen the amount of items that I'm bringing in. I was really thrilled with the quality of the Ralph Lauren dress and also the Madewell trousers. That could have been a couple of purchases that tipped the scale for me as far as quality over quantity. That's something I've really wanted to be better about. And I also listened to a podcast from the fashion gals. Um, they're very into sustainability and being creative and not consuming. It's Alyssa Bill Tempo, Sina Hansen, and Christina Myhas. And they have this awesome podcast. If you haven't listened to it, it's called Sustain This. I highly recommend you check it out. I've been listening to that. They put out a new episode every Tuesday. They made a comment in one of their 
episodes about the average number of clothing items that one should add to their closet per year and I was dumbfounded at the amount. It is five. You should only be adding five new items to your wardrobe each year from a sustainability, not over consuming standpoint. And that, well, to be quite honest, it made me feel really crummy because look at how many items I've just added in the last three months. So I'm way off base. I do feel in the month of August there was improvement. I only added three items in August, but for me, that was a win. And I do want to just keep trying to be better each day, each month, and continuing to work throughout this journey and learn more, consume less, but still have a blast with playing in my closet and being super creative. That is the budget update, my friends. I hope that this was informational and entertaining or relaxing or whatever you wanted it to be when you clicked on this video. Thank you so much. If you liked this video, give it a like. You know what to do. It helps YouTube recommend this video to others. And of course, if you're not subscribed, I would absolutely love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. I appreciate you taking out a few minutes to spend with me. I will link my budget year your playlist below. If you haven't watched those videos, you can definitely check those out. And I will see you again soon. Until then, remember, be kind. It doesn't cost a thing. Thanks, friends. Bye-bye.